Good morning everyone. So today we are going to start our new lesson transportation in plants and animals. Transportation in plants and animals. Topics to be covered in this lesson are introduction, transportation in animals, circulatory system in animals, excretory system in humans, transportation in plants, transpiration. So these are the topics we are going to cover in this lesson. Introduction. So what do you think would be transportation in plants and animals? So before getting into our this lesson, we should know some basic idea about this lesson. So the topic itself, transportation in animals and plants, isn't it? So what is transportation? That is the first question. What is transportation? Transportation is all about carrying substances from one place to another. That's why we will simply say transport. If you want to travel to one from one place to another place, what you used to say, we will select a suitable transport. If it is uh, nearby, within 5 km itself, you can choose which transport, either bicycle or by scooter itself. If you want to go more than 100 km, we will choose a bus as our transport, isn't it? So, what is transportation? Carrying substances from one place to another. So, now, why do you think that we need transportation inside our body? That is the second question. See, not only in human being, transportation is quite common in plants as well as animals. For this, I am going to give an example. The easy thing, the first one is food. So, already we have discussed a lot about uh, food and digestion and all. So, just recall, why do we need food? Because to get energy. So, when I say I need energy, who actually needs that energy? Each and every cell of my body needs energy. Am I correct? If I say when I need energy, it means each and every cell of our, my body needs energy. What is the purpose of that energy? It is doing lot of work and do want to do lot of activities. For those purpose, we need energy. So when I am eating food, where does the food go in? It enters mouth. Then it reaches stomach, small intestine and then in small intestine, in small intestine, a digestion takes place and the digested food are also absorbed by the small intestine. Then it reaches the absorbed food, reaches all parts of the cell. Why? For the production of energy. So, for the production of energy, respiration will come. That is the main purpose of respiration, isn't it? So, the cells of our head, our toe, from head to toe, all the cells need energy. So, for that energy, what it is needed? The energy what we are observed from the food that is needed. So, what happens? It is transported to all parts of the body. That is especially all cells, isn't it? So, Transportation plays an important role in food. Not only in food, we can also see some other example, especially the waste products. What do you mean by waste products? The thing which is not needed for our body is waste product. All the cells are releasing some waste products. One best example is carbon dioxide released during respiration. I hope you remember. So, that carbon dioxide exhaled from all by all the cells has to what it will do it has to exit from our body so they are also respire uh, sorry uh, transportation is very important it also plays an important role so so before getting into the lesson we should know what is transportation and why we need transportation so internal transport in animals is facilitated by circulatory system while i am speaking about transport it is not about the transport which is taking place outside that is vehicles and all not i'm not talking about vehicle transport i'm talking about internal transport that is 
the transport which is done in inside our body and it is facilitated by the circulatory system so circulatory system is the beautiful example for this internal transport okay if we say internal transport what are the things to be transported it transport oxygen that is we have seen from the atmosphere we are inhaling oxygen by the breathing process and uh, uh, that oxygen along with the blood that is with the help of hemoglobin it transport to all parts of the body so oxygen transport is taking place in our body food transport that is absorbed foods are transported to all parts of the body water or oh, each and every cell of our body needs water and hormones the hormones are also released by the glands so that is hormonal respiration hormonal transportation is also taking place to different parts of the body so these are the internal transports okay here some questions are asked who transports throughout the body as we are talking we know that okay we, we our body needs some transportation because uh, for all the main functions uh, uh, digestion absorption assimilation everything and respiration we need what transportation is very much needed so the next the question who transports through this throughout the body and next one how transport takes place how this mechanism takes place and circulatory disorders if there is any issues or any queries or any mistake then it will reach circulatory disorders so what will happen during that time so these are the three important questions we have come across with this circulatory system okay so now we are going to see about the circulatory system now blood so why we are going to see blood now any discussion on circulatory system has to start with blood any discussion on circulatory system has to start with what blood as we all know blood is a fluid which flows throughout our body blood is a fluid which flows throughout our body so it is an excellent medium to transport substances from one place to another place so uh, just take off uh, if, if you want to go to one place to another place we will do some route to move suppose if any vehicle is covering all the route together if you are choosing for example if a bus is there and a, sing uh, as a single bus it will goes to all place of that particular city means we will prefer that bus because we can uh, look all the places in within a single bus if we traveling in that bus we can do isn't it so that like that only blood it plays an important medium that is it gives a good transporter it do some good transport mechanism so who actually transports for the first question we got the answer blood blood actually transports the that is the transport medium so what is a blood so if you get a cut it starts bleeding so it's uh, some red fluid which is coming out from the wound have you seen yes so that red fluid is nothing but our blood so it acts as a circulatory medium medium means what a good uh, uh, transporter or supporter or connector which connects that one so it's since it is a fluid it can able to flow from one place to another place so it is a circulatory medium and second one it is a fluid connective tissue we know tissue group of cells is called what tissue connective tissue means what mom that is which we connect two different parts of the body fluid connective tissue meaning blood is a fluid which connects two different types of the sorry two different parts of the body hence it is blood is called as fluid connective tissue here uh, one picture was given A and B. Imagine A is a city and B is an another city. Okay, uh, and that if if people from city A wants to travel to P B city, what they will do? They have to use a road. That is, they have one connection. One junction was connection was given here. It is the road which connects the city A and city B. If B people the people living in city b wants to go to city a they use this road again this same road so the road acts as a connector like that the blood acts as a connective tissue which if you want to it can able to travel to one part to another part of our 
body and if we check the composition of blood it is not a made up of a single thing it contains 78% of water and it occupies 22% of solids so blood contains 78% of water 22% of solid so because of this 78% of water it is it can uh, easily flow from one place to another because uh, 72% water water is a somewhat liquid so it can easily flow isn't it so it contains blood contains 78% water because of this 78% it can flow from one place to another place and this shows its fluidity and 22% solids and this solids contains proteins minerals glucose lipids and amino acids okay so bl uh, blood being fluid actually connects different systems of body by transporting gaseous digested food transporting gaseous is nothing but oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange digested food that is the food absorbed by the small intestine has to transport to all parts of the cells hormones waste materials to different body parts here one picture was given i hope you were able to see this one and you can see some red and blue lines can you able to see yes so the red line represents uh, the blood which is rich in oxygen the red line represents the blood which is rich in oxygen hence they are called oxygenated blood the red line represents blood rich in oxygen and they are called as oxygenated blood the blue lines are rich in carbon dioxide blue lines are rich in carbon dioxide and they are called deoxygenated blood they are called what deoxygenated d e d oxygenated blood d e d meaning removal oxygen removed so oxygen removed meaning nothing but carbon dioxide okay so the red lines oxygen so oxygenated blood blue lines carbon dioxide hence they are called deoxygenated blood so in our body our cells need oxygenated blood for what purpose for the respiration what is respiration production of energy so the red lines represents oxygenated blood blue lines the same thing in respiration process carbon dioxide is also removed along with the energy and that carbon dioxide is not necessary for our body so again it transport along with the blood and it reaches the lungs then we are exhaling out isn't it so the blue lines are deoxygenated blood so the main the main thing is the two blood should not mix with each other so they are traveling in a separate vessels the blood carrying blood so transported inside the vessels they are called blood vessels so in later classes i'll discuss in later uh, in more detail okay so just simply know that red represents oxygenated blood that is they are rich in oxygen blue lines they are deoxygenated blood which means they are rich in carbon dioxide okay so how do you know what is a blood composed of that is the question the composition of blood that is a uh, composition meaning made up of the blood is made up of what the blood is made up of in order to know that uh, we have to do a simple experiment that is a simple experiment was performed where a sample of blood so in this picture you can able to see uh, first uh, first a test tube with the cap was given inside blood was taken isn't it so the sample of blood was taken in a test tube and then it has to be centrifuged the sense middle of the picture one uh, uh, apparatus was given that is called centrifugation apparatus it is called what centrifugation apparatus so we are going to place this um test tube inside that centrifugation apparatus at last the results you can able to see the the third picture was uh, that like that is the result we are going to obtain so before getting into this we should know what is centrifugation centrifugation means uh, to move an object at a very high speed to move an object at a very high speed if you are rotating uh, if the rotation is taken at a high speed what happen the denser particles that is particles which are more in weight try to move away and the lighter particles stay near to the center centrifugation centri meaning center so in the if this test tube the first uh, picture no 
this uh, test tube is placed inside this centrifuge centrifuge apparatus what happen and if it rotates in a very high speed the particles that is the particles which are suspended in the blood see yes, uh, before it slide itself i have shown the blood contains 78 percentage of water 22 percent solid solid may be it contains proteins amino acids hormones so many thing among the solids the denser particles the heavy particles what it will do because of its heavy weight it will settle down in the test tube the light particles what it will do it travels and move towards the center of the test tube so this is the uh, mechanism behind the centrifugation if you rotate at a high speed if the centrifugation means what rotating at a high speed the denser particles settle down the lighter particles move towards the center so after centrifugation we will get the result like this that is the blood is divided into three portion i hope you can able to see uh, yellowish color some then uh, next to some white band and the last one is red color actually before centrifugation the blood totally it is fully red in color after centrifugation we get three colors cream is yellowish cream color some white color band in between the last third one is red color so it is the after centrifugation so as a result after centrifugation the test tube segregated into half okay the lower part of the test tube consists of denser components of blood the upper part the topper part contains a lighter weight of blood so this division of composition of blood based on based on what density density meaning weight based on density it happens due to the centrifugation because when you move at the very high speed the denser particles cannot move fast so it remain at bottom so that's how it was found out blood is not a single it's not a particular liquid it is made up of different components so these are these are the components which occupy 22 percentage of blood i hope you understand so it is made up of different components and some components are and all the components are not in same weight some are denser components and some are light components so what are the diff now we are going to see what are these three different uh, components are so i again say the different components which we obtained after centrifugation is some yellow color white color and red color here i marked as 1 2 3 i hope you are able to see that one so uh, the color yellow occupies more in the test tube while comparing to color 2 and color 3 that is white and red yellow occupies more in number that is which means that is nothing but plasma that is nothing but what plasma and plasma is not red in color it is somewhat creamish color actually it is somewhat cream is color so not responsible plasma is not responsible for the red color of the blood when you look about its abundance uh this was present almost 55 percentage of total volume it occupies because it is somewhat more uh, more in number while comparing to 2 and 3 one occupies more space so in total volume of blood plasma is occupied 55 percent of its total volume okay the next color one second one yeah is, uh, i hope you and you can see some white burnt that is called somewhat buffy coat uh which contains less than 1 percent of total volume in total volume it occupies only less than 1 percentage it is uh, some was very uh, buffy layer very small layer you can able to see uh, and that uh, layer that second one it consists of wbc and platelets w meaning white white blood cells wbc meaning what white blood cells otherwise called leukocytes and it also contains platelets otherwise called thrombocytes and third one third one is nothing but rbc that is red blood cells otherwise called erythrocytes ery meaning red color cytes meaning cells so red blood cells erythrocytes it occupies 45 percentage of total volume so if we take a uh, total volume of blood definitely the blood contains 55 percentage of plasma for about uh, nearly 45 percent of total volume is occupied by the 
red blood cells and less than 1% contains WBC and platelets. Even though WBC and platelets are having very less in number, its function is very important. They are doing in defense mechanism. Okay, and if you check uh, red blood cells, so the RBCs are red in color, isn't it? So if I ask you out of these four components, that is plasma, WBC, platelets and RBC, which component contribute the red color of blood? What would you, what would you be the answer? What would be your answer? Yes. RBC definitely RBC because in first plasma it is creamish color so red color is not there so plasma is not responsible for the red color second white band buffy layer WBC and platelets okay that is also not so the third uh, RBC or uh, RBCs are responsible for the red color so the our blood is red in color because of the RBCs okay uh, that is why RBC and why this RBC are red in color because RBC contain RBC contains the pigment hemoglobin uh, and we have already studied about uh, studied about hemoglobin in our respiration in organism lesson it have a high binding uh, that is high affinity towards oxygen so that's why it, uh, oxygens are binding with this uh, uh, blood RBC and it travel to all parts of the cell for the energy production okay so hemoglobins because of this hemoglobin only because oxygen can bind with this hemoglobin and they are called oxyhemoglobin it travels to all parts of the cells and inside the, then it reaches the cell and energy production takes place and carbon dioxide removed from the cells that also take by take by the blood okay so this is the composition of blood so from this it is clearly understood that blood is not a single component it is made up of four different components what are the four components plasma rbc's wbc's platelets so in total volume plasma occupies more that is 55 percentage and uh, then uh, red blood cells almost 45 percentage and wbc and platelet platelets make uh, less than one percentage even though they are very low in number they play an important mechanism in our body Okay, uh, go through the video again, uh, the remaining uh, thing we, we will do in our next class. Okay, thank you.